Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church on this second Sunday after Epiphany. And also a preemptive happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day tomorrow. So first off, I would like to bring your attention to our uh, mission and ministry opportunities. So every Sunday, as you are aware, we have our virtual worship service. It begins at 1015 for some fellowship, and that is live on Zoom. And then we have our live recording on YouTube. And then later on, Dennis posts to the church Facebook page and website uh, if you want to watch later in the day. We have some meetings coming up. We have our finance committee, UMW, trustees, etc. So if you see a meeting you need to go to, 
Here are all the upcoming dates and times on Zoom. We also want to make note that our UMW mission opportunities, they've been uh, putting together care packages for deployed female soldiers, which is super awesome. And we also have some fantastic knitters, I believe it's knitting, um, it may be crocheting or sewing, some sort of crafting of babies' hats. So uh, that's, that's fantastic. So we wanna thank all those women that have uh, done these wonderful charitable activities. And lastly, I'd like you to bring your attention to our lay planter, um, oops, okay, not upcoming lay planter training. I promise this isn't training on gardening or making a planter. This is a slight mishap of a slide and it's actually lay leader training. So if uh, you would like this opportunity to help you learn how to be a better lay minister, uh, contact pastor and you can also look at your bulletin today for more information. Just remember it's not actual gardening training. Please join me in the responsive call to worship and prayer. Beloved God, you know us inside and out, and you still call us to serve you. Lord, honestly, we are often hesitant, afraid, and wish to remain hidden. Empower us to listen for and to hear your call. Empower us to answer your call with, here I am, Lord. Lord of mercy and justice, so many have gone before us working to bring justice and peace to our country and our world. Their footsteps seem too big to step into to continue the work you have called us all to. So we hesitantly step one step at a time, bringing your seeds of hope, justice, and peace in a world crying out for them. Lord of hope, we pray for our country, our leaders, and especially our new president, as he is inaugurated into leading our country in tumultuous times. We pray for healing of our country, reconciliation, forgiveness, and peace. Lord of peace, we pray for your compassion and healing for those individuals in our congregation who need it. We pray for your comfort and presence for those who are grieving, lonely, and oppressed. We pray for warmth, shelter, clothing, and food for those who are without. Lord, we say to you this day, here we are your servants willing to preach your word. Offer care where care is needed, presence where presence is needed, your love where your love is needed. Lord, strengthen us for our ministry today and every day. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is. Should we linger and heed not his word? 
mercies, mercies for you and for me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are God, and there is no other. You are God, and there is none like you. You love us with an eternal love, and we give you our offerings as an expression of our love for you. We pray our gifts will be used to extend your kingdom in our land. May you, the God of all grace, who has called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, make us holy, strong, and filled with your peace and love. To you be the glory and honor forever and ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Source of all our gifts, praise Jesus Christ, whose power of bliss, praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My beloved family of God, it is so good to see you all. Thanks to God for this beautiful day. And I would like to welcome uh, Hillary and Kevin and uh, Zoe, see? Uh, yeah, everybody uh, this morning, new faces uh, to our community. That um, I would like to appreciate if you Give me, share uh, your contact information with me uh, so that I can contact you. Uh, I will appreciate it. So let's share our joys and concerns, uh, Julius. Sure, thank you, Pastor. This is the time of the service where we share our joys and concerns. The way to do that is just kind of grab my attention. I'll call on you and then you can mute, unmute your mic uh, for that period of time. So anybody have a joy and concern they would like to share with the congregation? Yeah, Eugene, go ahead. Go ahead and unmute there. Yes, I have, I'm un unmuted. 
I just wanted to say that our daughter's surgery was postponed because the surgical unit got contaminated with the virus. Oh. Wow. And hmm. so they had to postpone everybody. She now has a date. It's February 20-something. February 20th. 20th. 22nd, 24th, something like that. <laughs> something in that range. Yeah. And Eugene, what's your daughter's name? I just wanted to make sure we have that. Heather. Heather. Okay, certainly prayers to Heather. And Edward. So it's it's still the heart valve, but. Sure. Heart surgery. Thank you, Eugene. You're Anybody welcome. Else? Anybody else have a joy and concern? Yeah, Katie and John. Um, I'd still like prayers for our daughter, Susan, and um, now her partner, uh, Bob, has COVID. So they're still struggling with the uh, COVID. Um, and our son, Chuck, had successful kidney stone surgery on Wednesday. So we're very thankful for that. Yeah, prayers for Chuck and Susan and Bob. Where does Susan and Bob live again? I'm sorry. Denver. In Denver. Okay, prayers all the way out to Denver for Susan and Bob, for sure. I'm glad to hear Chuck's doing well. Any other joys and concerns? January, it's light. <laughs> okay. I'll just say, uh, again, I'll just uh, reiterate what the past said. It's great to see some new faces on the Zoom call today. So if you have a chance to meet them virtually afterwards, feel free uh, to do that. And uh, with that, I think Pastor will go back to you. Thank you, Julius. So uh, Dave, Dave Funk is going to finish his seventh week. Uh, hopefully this uh, be the last week with radiation. He still has a lot of uh, difficulties to eat uh, food. And a Logan family, they are doing, um, they are hanging in there. Uh, uh, Olivia and Jeff are doing good. Um, and Mike and Adela went to hospital but came home and um, making some progress. But uh, Adela's mom, Arlene Bowie, uh, she is now in hospice. Uh, so please remember her in your prayers. And also Carrie uh, Hutchison, he is not uh, eating much and sleeping a lot. And so please remember Carrie Hutchison in your prayers. <clears throat> Okay, and I um, received a letter last night from Bishop. Uh, he, she sent this letter to everybody, and I want to share that with you. I have received information from my colleague, uh, Bishop Mark Holmerod of the Sierra Pacific uh, Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America uh, that is concerning and that I felt you needed to be aware of. Two FBI agents who are members of ELCA congregations have shared with their pastors there is chatter among white supremacy groups about plans to attack liberal activists and churches along with state capitals on Sunday, January 17th and Wednesday, January 20th, Inauguration Day. He felt it was important to share this information with his clergy. I agree with Bishop and wanted all of you to have this information as well. I know we have all been aware of the potential of continued violent demonstrations, but this report of the possible targeting of churches made it uh, imperative that I share it with all of you. 
Thank you for all you do to faithfully lead our congregations, but do be careful. I am concerned about all of you and all our churches and the communities where we serve with a particular burden for our pastors and congregations serving in and around the two capital cities in our area, Sacramento and Carson City. The district superintendents and I stand ready to support you in every good way. Please do not hesitate to reach out to your district superintendent with any needs you may have during these days of political unrest. I will work with them to assure a timely response. Let us pray for one another, for all communities of faith striving to be faithful, and for the nation in this dark hour. May we not waver in our commitment to be agents of God's mercy, justice, and peace. Let us begin our prayers uh, as we always do with uh, silence. Let us take a deep breath, breathe in, breath of God, breathe out, mercy of God. Breathe in, the breath of God, breathe out, mercy of God. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out the love of God. I'd like to invite all of you to pray for all those people whose names are on this slide in silence for the healing and strength for the sick. Continue to pray for these people, for their healing and strength, and also for our homebound brothers and sisters. We continue to lift up these names, O oh God, Susan and Bob with COVID. Also, Dave Funk, Carrie Hutchison, Arlene Bowie, the Logan family, and for the surgery postponed, Heather, the daughter of Eugene and Jenny Davis. Continue to pray for safety and strength for all our medical workers here and everywhere. For the safety and strength for all the firefighters, police officers, soldiers, school workers, and teachers, and our Hope House volunteers. O oh Lord God, we pray for our nation. Our democracy and freedom are being threatened by violent political extremists whose foundations are based on lies and conspiracies and fear. Oh God, help all of us to be able to see the truth instead of lies, to be able to act upon the truth 
guided by love and peace and justice. O oh God, we pray that you may bless our president to be inaugurated this Wednesday and help him with your spirit of counsel and strength that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people over whom he presides. May he encourage due respect for virtue and faith. May he execute the laws with justice and mercy. May he seek to restrain crimes, vice, and immorality. Please help all the leaders to work with wisdom and compassion so that the poor and the powerless may be treated fairly and with justice. Give all the leaders, O oh God, wisdom to know how best to respond and courage to do the right thing even when it may not be popular. O oh, loving God, teach your people to rely on your strength and to accept their re responsibilities to their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you and honor your holy name in our generation. O oh God, show us many ways for, our, for us, for all of us to go together to make a peaceful and beloved community on this blessed land. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Please join me in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our lighthouse. 
God is our lighthouse. And when waves are crashing on life's rocky shore, when we need safe harbor, a refuge in the storm, God is our lighthouse shining in the night. He guides us safely with His holy light. Oh, 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 when you're lost in night, and the moon not shining so bright, God is our lighthouse. Oh, peace. God is our lighthouse. He is our guiding light, oh, day by day. His wisdom gives us words that we need to say. greatest love with us every day His ever shining light shows us the way Oh, open peace God is our lighthouse Oh, open peace God is our lighthouse God bless, stay healthy, and have a beautiful week. Our scripture reading for today is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for today. Thanks be to God.
So today's Old Testament um, text is about uh, Samuel, the boy Samuel. We all know this story, and this story reminds us that God calls us again and again uh, until we hear his calling. Whether you are young, like Samuel, or uh, more matured, like uh, the priest Eli, God is calling us because God sees something in us. No matter how weak we are, how faulty we are, God always sees something in us. We are so useful. No matter how our readiness, our expertise, or any skills are so lacking, right? God sees something in us. That's why God keeps calling us. The young Samuel, uh, the boy Samuel, was called four times. For the first three times, he had no idea who was calling him. So each time he heard someone calling him, he went to the priest Eli. He thought Eli, Eli was calling him, but Eli also didn't know what's, what's happening. But after three times, he realized that God was calling this young Samuel. Can you imagine when you realize that? Why not me? Why this young kid, young child, that God is calling? He could have been surprised and perplexed or even embarrassed. But Eli was an honest man, even though uh, he was not so good with uh, raising his two sons. You will see those stories as you read. Anyway, he humbly accepted the truth that God was calling Samuel and not him. And he told everything, all the truth to Samuel and helped him mentored him and uh, helped him to uh, know how to respond to God's calling. So from this story, we learn that God, even though God is wonderful, God can do anything, but God does not work alone. God always works with us with people, his people, young and old, male or female. He always works with people for healing, for redemption. Well, as you can see in this cartoon, um, God's calling endeavor oftentimes, maybe sometimes, or more, more often, uh, faces difficulties because it's not often answered. So he called here someplace and, he, and they said, well, this is technical support. How may I help you? And God says, dude, this thing is so messed up. But as you know, God would never give up. He simply keep calling, calling, and trying. And he has a lot of technical supports. When I asked for technical, my technical support, God sent me Dennis. <laughs> and so many people here in this community but our God has so many. Think about that. Imagine how many technical supports are in this world for our God. 
So for the young Samuel, the helper was the priest Eli. For the running Jonah, you know the story Jonah, God's helper was the big fish. And for the king David, when he was doing all kinds of uh, wrong things, he was not listening to God. God must have called, called him so many times, but he was not listening. So God called for help. His uh, support, uh, his helper this time was the prophet Nathan. So Nathan stood up for the truth and confronted King David courageously. So let us think about ourselves. How many technical supports God has used to, to have our attention, right? So far, how many your maybe our parents, our youth director or choir director or our friends and neighbors, God is using all of them to get the attention from us. So thanks to God for not giving us up and thanks to all those God's support, technical supporters. In today's story, Jesus finds not one, not even two, but four, and eventually more to do his ministry on earth. Like God, Jesus does not seem interested in solo spirituality or the lone believer. Jesus found Philip, who then brought to Jesus his two friends, Andrew and Peter, and then they found Nathaniel, who was a little skeptic. Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And at this point, Philip had two choices. One, to argue with him. The other, to simply say, come and see. He didn't even try to argue with him. He said, come and see. Philip chose this simple strategy and said, come and see. It turned out to be a very effective way because Nathaniel came to Jesus, went to Jesus, and Jesus convinced him. Sometimes it is easier for us to start an argument and try to win it. But most of times, it would not work. When you think you win the arguments, you lose the person. Look at this. Jesus would say, I called you to win souls, not to win arguments. Come on. Maybe every time some, some people try to win the argument. But in my 35 years of ministry, I tried to win many arguments, but uh, I rarely uh, won both arguments and the people. So I lost many, uh, many souls. Um, hopefully God had sent to their ways. Someone like Philip who would simply say, friend, come and see. I don't know, just come and see. So Philip said, come and see, and Jesus took care of the rest of it. 
What did he do? When he saw Nathanael coming to him, Jesus said to him, Jesus said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Obviously, Nathanael was curious. How, how could he know? We never met before. So he said, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathaniel said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Do you understand what is happening here? It, it sounds like a secret codes. We, I don't understand, uh, right? It's hard to understand. But Nathaniel was surely convinced. So he was convinced that Jesus was the Holy One, a true prophet from God, because Jesus knew, Jesus knew him. Jesus knew what he was doing and what he was up to. He thought some, so in Jesus' time, how people know whether this person is the true prophet or not, they know when they see this person knows something about them, something that is hidden, especially to the eyes of strangers. Do you remember the story of the Samaritan woman, right? She was also very uh, skeptical at the beginning. She had a lot of questions, but when Jesus said, I know that you had five husbands, and the one who you are living with now, he's not your husband. At that time, finally, finally, she realized that this man was a true prophet. So that's what's happening here. The same thing happened to the Samaritan woman. So, we don't know what exactly Nathaniel was doing under the fig tree, but we know that what he was doing under fig tree, not many people knew about it. Especially strangers would have no idea what he was doing under fig tree. But Jesus said, you are. He is a true Israelite. So uh, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, may, maybe Nathaniel was spending time under fig tree to spend time alone with God. It was holy, only the time for him and God. Maybe he was praying for the nation. Maybe he was praying for the people of God, for the salvation of the people. Why do I think so? Because Jesus said he was a truly a Israelite. So he did something that had something to do with the nation, the Israelites. So, that's how Jesus could communicate with Nathaniel. No one else in the world could have such communication with Nathaniel and could convince a skeptic like Nathaniel by just saying and speaking and communicating with him briefly. In today's world, we see a lot of people like the boy Samuel who have no idea whether God is calling them or not. 
We also see a lot of skeptics like Nathaniel who would keep asking, can anything good come out of a church institution? Have you seen those people? I have. So young generations like Samuel would need a mentor like Eli who would say to them, young man, God is calling you. God is calling you. Young lady, God is calling you. Somebody can say that to these young generations. They keep hearing something but they don't know what's happening. They need mentor like you. Skeptics like Nathaniel would need a helper like Philip who would simply say, friend, just come and see. Well, this is a simple act, but you know and I know it is not an easy act, easy thing to do, you know, to say, come and see to your friends or neighbors. Why? Well, good for Philip, he had real Jesus physically there, right there, <laughs> right? But we don't have uh, Jesus in person here. We have him in spirit. So the big, the real big question for us is, what can they expect to see when they come, right? That's why we are hesitant. These days, it's hard, right? So, how can we show Jesus when they come? The clue is in John chapter 1, verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and one, only one who, ca who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. Jesus is full of grace and truth. So, Invite your friends, invite your neighbors to our church or our mission site where they can see themselves the space of grace, the act of truth. Today, is the 11th day after the outrageous attack on our Capitol building and 75 days after the election and the shameful lies about election results and many many months and years of white supremacist, racist offenses and attacks, anti-Semitic attacks. And three days before 2021 presidential inauguration day, what we need to do today is not to argue anymore but to find or create more spaces of not just grace alone, not just 
truth alone, but definitely the spaces of full of grace and truth in good balance. There, there, right there, people can see Christ. People can see Jesus. They can experience God's grace and God's truth. And that is the manifest, manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Martin Luther King once said, I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love, which is grace, will have the final word. Amen to that. He believed in the presence of Jesus Christ, truth and grace, in healthy balance. There we can see the hope and the lighthouse as Joe Kick sang today. There is hope right there. It is time to put these words into our practices. It's time to create strong and healthy spaces of Jesus, the space where we can show our beautiful Jesus, full of grace and truth. I read this story a rich donor was visiting Calcutta and met Mother Teresa. She pulled out her checkbook and said, how can I help you in your work? And Mother Teresa pressed the checkbook back into, into the woman's purse, took her by the hand and said, come and see, come and see. She led the woman into an impoverished area and found a hungry, frail child and said, care for her. The woman took the child in her lap, wiped her brow, and fed her. It was a transformative moment for her. Mother Teresa was right when she said, when we care for a child, we are caring for Jesus. When we love the unloved, we are loving Jesus. Brothers and sisters, God alone can change people. Jesus alone can transform someone's heart. But we know they do not work alone. We are their technical supports. So they call us today, you and me. So let us be ready to be their technical supports. Amen. Let us pray in silence, thinking about God's calling your name.
Oh, loving God, help us whatever we do, wherever we go. Help us to create Jesus' space full of grace and truth for your kingdom, we pray. Amen. Let us sing the closing hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the presence and the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with all of us 
now and forever. Amen. Let's say peace be with you in sign language. Peace be with you. Two more times. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Amen.